Welcome! I made a previous video on this FLIR 1 Pro thermal camera, and I'll put a link in the description to my FLIR playlist where you can find that video, and I'll also put a link in the description to the FLIR camera, and if you find this video helpful and you're looking to purchase one, using my link helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So in this video I wanted to go over the FLIR 1 app. So I'm new to thermal cameras and I'm new to this app, so I'm filming this from the perspective of a newbie. So if you have any questions, drop a comment below and I'll try to answer them. If I say something incorrectly, go ahead and correct me in the comments, politely please, and if you're not polite, that's fine too. That's your prerogative. And after you're done watching this, you might want to look through the comments to see if anyone has made corrections. So I have the FLIR 1 Pro camera hooked into my iPad. This is an iPad Pro. It's the original iPad Pro. So this has the lightning connector. I have the app open and I have my MacBook here in range of the camera because I wanted something that had some heat on it. And I just have a video playing full screen. I'll actually make that a little smaller so it's not as distracting. And I'm just going to go through the different features of the app. So if you look at the top left corner, you can see the battery indicator and that's at 100%. And just below that, there's an icon and I had trouble with this icon and I actually tweeted FLIR and got some information from them. This icon activates the shutter and you may have noticed it just turned red there. It did it on its own and that calibrates the camera. So it will do it automatically every once in a while, but you can also hit that to manually do it. So I just hit it and it manually does it. So right now I have this point at my laptop, but say I went to a fire and you want to recalibrate it towards that heat range you might see there. So you would press that button. If we go further down on the left side, we can see a little timer. And if I hit it once, it says three. If I hit it twice, it says five. So that's for three and five seconds. So that's like a self timer. So you could hit the photo button, run in front of the thermal camera, and after three or five seconds, it will take your picture. Next, we have the flashlight, and that turns the light on on your device. So if it's an iPhone, iPad, Android device, it will turn the flashlight on. That's because using the MSX technology, it's going to use the regular camera and the thermal camera, and the regular camera needs light to work. You're obviously not going to use that if you're trying to find animals in the dark in the woods. You might need it if you were, say, looking at a service panel and you wanted to see different breakers, it might help to have that extra light there. Next we have the temperature indicator. So it's a circle with these little lines on it. So if I tap that, it's kind of hard to read on the screen the way I have it oriented right now, but on the bottom it says temperature meters, spot, rectangle, or circle, and at the top it has these plus symbols. So this probably looks a little bit better on a smartphone, on a smaller screen. So if I want to do spot temperature, I'll hit the little plus, I'll hit the button on the left, the circle, to exit out of here, and we have a temperature on here now. So currently it's pointed at the space bar and it says 77 degrees F. So I can drag this up. Now it's on like the Y key and it says 88 degrees F. I can hit the circle on the left again. I can hit plus on spot. I'll hit the circle and now I have two temperatures. So now I can do say like the wrist pad is 77 degrees and the Y key is 88 degrees. I can do that again. And now we have a third. I think this will do four, let's try. No, it does three. So if I hit rectangle, it looks like it was able to add a rectangle and circle. So right now I have nine, let's see what that looks like. So this is nice and messy now, but you can see I have different squares. So the spot is looking at the temperature in a single location, and you can also look in a square location or a circle location. I'm guessing when you're looking at the square of the circle, it's probably averaging out those temperatures. So if I want to get rid of those, I can just go back into that screen and hit minus, and it will take those off. So I like to have one just spot, and I can drag that around. So below that, we have the three lines. That's just our general menu. We have home, camera, gallery, contact FLIR, FLIR One apps, settings, about, and help. And I'm not going to go through all of that. That's relatively straightforward. I will say if you go to settings, I'll go into that. Hope I don't get lost here. We get to the FLIR 1 settings in the system settings. So here we have the system settings, like if it allows location access, if it allows access to photos, we can enable or disable the microphone. We have Siri search. I'm not sure exactly how that integrates. And below that we have automatic calibration. So I haven't tried this, but I'm guessing if we turn that off, then you'd have to hit that button to calibrate. We have temperature unit, which I've set to Fahrenheit. I'm in the US. It's what I recognize more readily. <laughs> and then we have emissivity. If we hit that, we have matte, semi-matte, semi-gloss, and glossy. And glossy is not recommended and matte is. So I've left that on matte. So I think that's for if you're looking at reflective surfaces. So I'll go back to the main app. And then if you go to help, it has different settings here. And I'm going over a lot of these things in this video. 
So now let's go to the upper right where we have the preference menu. And on the left here, we have a little eyeball, we have MSX and a little flame looking thing. If I hit the eyeball, we'll see just the video. So this is the video camera on the FLIR. You can see it's not a super sharp high res camera, but it does the job, it doesn't need to be. If we go to MSX, we have a mix of the thermal camera and the regular camera. And then if we go to the flame, this is just the thermal camera. So I've been using it on MSX. As I said in my previous video, I kind of bought this because it has MSX. It's supposed to be very good at overlaying the thermal and the regular images. And thus far, I've been pretty happy with it. Although we'll go over an issue here in one of the next settings. So next we have palettes. That looks like the little color swatches you would get at a paint store. So if I hit that, you can click on the different palettes. So I'll go through these. We have contrast. And actually, I'm going to skip palettes. Let's go right to the next one, which is MSX distance. I'll go back to palettes. Sorry about the shaking of the screen. I have this on a tripod and it's not super sturdy. So I kind of mentioned this in the previous video that since the lenses are separate, the thermal and the regular image may not line up. So you have this MSX distance and you have a slider here and you can see here I can slide this up and down and line up the two images. So right now I'm probably, I don't know, a foot and a half away from the laptop. So if I was further away, I would have to adjust this differently. But if I had something else within the same range, it would likely line up. I think I need to go over just a little bit more. And I think we're just about lined up there. There we go. So I wanted to skip ahead to that so the palette looks a little nicer. So back on palettes, we have contrast mode. This is iron, and this is the one I've been using. Next we have color wheel. This is coldest, hottest, rainbow, arctic, gray, and lava. So if you want to find the hottest thing, you might go to the hottest mode. Or if you want to find the coldest thing, you might go to the coldest mode. As I've been learning this, I've mostly been staying on iron, but as I get into it a little bit more, I'll probably switch back and forth between these. I've just found it easier to not switch around the palettes right now while I'm trying to learn it. So we did MSX distance. Next we have temp range and we have low temps and high temps. So this kind of calibrates it towards what kind of temps you're using. So this is low temps, this is high temps. Next we have lock span, and I think that's kind of like how you have an exposure lock on a camera, so it doesn't switch around. So I imagine if I brought something really hot into the frame, it wouldn't completely mess up my range. Then we have IR scale. If we hit that, that brings that up on the bottom, and we can drag on there to adjust this. So you can see this is, I don't know if you'd say it's like contrast. So I'll turn that off. And then next we have selfie mode. So I'll hit that and that will turn it upside down. So I currently have this pointing away from the screen on the iPad, but if I flipped it around so it was in like selfie mode, I could hit this button to reverse the image. So the way I use this button is when I plug it in, if the image doesn't look right, I hit the selfie mode and that fixes it. So I think those are all the settings here. Under the settings we have the shutter button and you have photo, video, time lapse. So you can just drag between the settings here. And I'll just take a photo of this. And if you do that, that will end up in your gallery. So below the shutter button, we have that. I'll hit on that. And here we have the image. So it didn't appear to rotate this. I can hit the pencil here. Looks like I can get some temperatures on it. We can switch between visual, MSX and thermal. You can change the palette the MSX distance, and the IR scale. If you take a picture and say your MSX isn't lined up right or something like that, you can change that later. So that's pretty handy. And then we can hit save. It's asking if we want to modify it. I'll say modify. Oh, okay, there it rotated it. So, so now I can exit out of here. Along the bottom we have trash. We have an icon for share. So you can save it to your album, you can text it to someone, and then we have the I, and that's for info. So that'll tell you the max temperature, the minimum temperature. It will have a map where you took the picture. I'm not showing it on here because there's private information. I'd have to blur it out anyway. On the very top, we can go to the left. That'll take us to the gallery. No, wait, let me click back to that. We want to hit the little um, three by three grid. That'll take us to the gallery. So here we can see the other photos I've taken. It even came with a few sample images, like this dog. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If I missed anything or if you have any questions, please drop a comment below. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.